Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how we solve information based on intersecting quadratic functions. So we have a couple of options here. So we can have a quadratic function intersecting with a linear function. So for example, if we have a quadratic intersecting with a linear, we have two possible points of intersection. Now we have a chance, we have two, we have a choice of two options when we're solving these kind of questions. We can either solve graphically by drawing the graph and seeing exactly on the graph then where our two points of intersection lie or we can solve it algebraically. Always make sure that you read the question carefully as to which method they're asking for. Sometimes if they, sometimes if a method isn't given, it might be easier or a better option to solve algebraically because that is always going to give you the more accurate answer, especially if these, if these points lie on decimal places. So for example, if the coordinates at this point were, say, 2.5, 3.5, it can be harder to see from a graph. So in terms of linear and quadratic, we have a couple of options. One where a linear function may cut twice, so at two separate intervals. And also we may have a linear function that is a tangent to the quadratic function. In both cases, we can draw the graphs and look at where the intersection point is, or we can solve algebraically. We can also have two quadratic functions intersecting. So we may have a positive quadratic and a negative quadratic. That's one example of, quadra of um, intersecting points. And we could have two quadratics intersecting, which means that we could only have one point of intersection. It depends. So let's look at how we solve one example of these questions, both graphically and algebraically. So the question I'm taking is from page 395 of our book. And we're going to look at question one, part E. All right, so I'm going to solve it algebraically first, and then we're going to look at solving it um, graphically. So we are given two functions. We are given the first function, f of x is equal to x squared minus 6. And we are also given gx, which is minus x squared plus 4x, plus 5. So those are our two quadratic equations. All right, so we're looking at two quadratics intersecting. Obviously, this is a positive quadratic. This is a negative quadratic. So this will be a U-shaped graph. This will be an N-shaped graph. So looking at um, solving algebraically, first of all, all we do is we let the two equations equal each other. Because remember, we're dealing with one variable on the right-hand side. This one is y is equal to x squared minus 6. y is equal to minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. So we can simply let them equal each other and solve. x squared minus 6 is equal to minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. Bringing everything. So remember, to solve a quadratic, we need to bring everything to one side. So minus x squared comes across, becomes plus x squared. So we have 2x squared. We have minus 4x, that becomes minus 5, so that is minus 11, and that is equal to 0. So then we have a choice. We can either use the minus b formula, or we can use factorizing. Um, looking at the numbers here, they might be a little bit awkward, so we'll use the minus b formula. So we have b minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So 4 times by 2 times by minus 11, making sure that we uh, keep the sign there, and 2 times by 2. So our two options are x is equal to, and I'm going to give it correct to maybe two decimal places, x is equal to 3.55, so the minus b formula is the correct option in this case, and x is equal to minus 1.55, all right? So solving it algebraically is quick it's efficient, and you get an exact answer. Now let's look at solving it graphically. So the first thing we need to do with all questions is a, read the question carefully, and you'll be given a range of values that you want to look at. So in this range of values, when we want to solve it graphically, we are asked to look at the range minus 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So when we're looking at our table function in the calculator to put these values in, we look at our start value as minus 4, end value as 1. So mode 3 for table, typing in your function then, uh, first function starting at minus four, ending at one. We are going to look at the following coordinates. I'm gonna write down my coordinates over here so that I have space. So my first set of coordinates, minus four, 10. We have minus three, three. We have minus two, minus two. We have minus one, minus five. 
0 minus 6, and 1 minus 5. That's for the first function. So I have them written on my site panel here. And then for the second function, we have minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. Same start and end point, same steps. And we are looking at the following coordinates. So we have minus 4, minus 27. We have minus 3, minus 16, minus 2, minus 7. We have minus 1, 0, 0, 5, and 1, 8. Okay, now let's, we know that from our algebra that the two intersecting points were 3.55 and minus 1.55. So those are the two values of y, yeah, x, yeah. So those are the two x values that we need to concentrate on. So when you're drawing your graph, so we need to go up to 10 on the y-axis down to minus 27. Now, obviously, on paper, you'll be able to draw this a bit more accurately. So we have... 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, our first point, let's look at the x squared minus 6 graph first of all. So we have minus 4, 10, which is here. We have minus 3, 3, here. We have minus 2, minus 2, about there. We have minus 1, minus 5, 0, minus 6, 1, minus 5. And that will be a symmetrical graph. So the next one will be 2, minus 2, 3, 3, there. And that will be the shape of that quadratic graph there. All right, so that is f of x, sorry. So that's f of x there. Right now we need to draw g of x. I'm going to do it in a different color. So we're looking at minus 4, minus 27, which is all the way down here somewhere. Minus 3, minus 16, which is there. Uh, minus 2, minus 7, which is about there. Uh, minus 1, 0. We have 0, 5, 1, 8. And it's going to continue on in that trajectory then and it's going to turn around i'll just enter our i'll just extend our end point so that we have a few more coordinates so three so two nine three eight and four five all right so our gx graph going to be something like that all right so that's g of x in red so points of intersection we can quite clearly see if we go up to the y-axis or up to the x-axis sorry we're halfway between minus one and minus two so that's minus 1.5 one minus 1.5 roughly minus 1.55 and over here we're not asked for this one we're only asked for this section of the graph but if we're asked for both options this is 3.55 or 3.6 so that's both options for solving algebraically and solving graphically. Um, algebraically, you let f of x equal g of x and solve using your unnorm or normal algebra. And graphically, then you simply graph both options, label them separately, and look for where the, the, the two graphs intersect. All right, that's it. Hope that makes sense. And I'll leave an assignment on our Google Classroom for today. Thank you.